dollars? What the f What the f This better have dolphins with like liquid IVs in it that dive into your skin and literally do backflips in every pour for this price. When I first read The Summer I Turned Pretty, I thought it said The Summer I Turned 30. And I was like, wow, I've never related more. I'm a medical esthetician and for the past 10 years, oh, 14 years, I've literally been working in beauty or obsessed with beauty for more than half of my life, which is crazy to think. But welcome to Life Under the Rock with your resident medical esthetician, Acne Big Sister. This is where you learn about science-based beauty and how different ingredients interact with our skin and um i don't know celebrities but i'm trying to learn so today we are analyzing scrutinizing and reacting to lola tongue's the summer i turned pretty little beauty secrets i hope that i'm pronouncing her name correctly and i'm very scared to see what happens because usually these celebrities um, spend way too much money on things that aren't actually gonna improve their skin. So let's find out what's going on here and see if this is the reason that she's pretty or if it's some form of natural beauty. Hi, it's Lola Tung and I'm gonna walk you through my skincare routine and a very lit makeup look. I'm starting with uh, this Good Molecules Nice and Mild Brightening Toner and I just use my hands. Wait, I start off with excitement and confusion. What's conflicting emotions underneath this rock that is my residence because I don't watch TV? First off, I love her pajamas. Those are so cute and I kind of want them. She's pulling out the Good Molecules Niacinamide Toner. This is so f good, but I'm, where's, are we cleansing? And because she's doing makeup after, this must be the morning, does she not use a cleanser? Does she not sweat or get crusty at night? There are some people who don't need to wash their face in the morning. Dermatologist Dr. Dre actually recommended not washing your face if you're dry. And for a period of time, I would just wash my face with water. It works for some people, but I wish that either Vogue didn't cut it out and like told us what was going on or that Lola would explain to us why she's not cleansing before she's just going in with some toner. I love that she uses her hands though. Why waste a cotton pad if we don't have to? Also, this is like a $10 product. Yes, Lola, yes. Then I go in with this herbivore lapis oil and I take like four drops. And if my skin's really dry, I'll do more than that. I wish I knew if she had oily or dry skin based on <laughs> the filters that Vogue puts on their guests. <laughs> It looks combination, but we'll find out. We went from using like an $11 toner that will help to minimize pores and gently renew and hydrate the skin, which is really good in a nice glass package, to like a $70 skincare oil. I believe this is called the Lapis Oil from Herbivore. And there is something to be said about the main ingredient in this product, which is blue tansy oil. A lot of people say that it's really good for acne prone skin. And there isn't like medical data showing that this is going to get rid of acne. That's not what it do. But there are some studies and some people who have said, hey, this blue tansy oil is actually really great for the skin. It's an antioxidant and it tends to work well for those who do be, for those who do be a little more oily. If you do be a little more oily, this one may work for you. The problem is if you do be a little more broke, this one's like $70. So it's a lot to pay for. It was um, Caroline Hirons. She's a facialist from the UK. She runs an amazing blog. She is like the human equivalent of a chemical peel. And she had spoken about this once and I did buy it because I have oily acne prone skin. And I got the little mini one and it just was not worth it for me. So for some people, if you love the blue oil, if you have the money, go for it. But for others, it can just be a little bit overpriced and you can get some really good facial oils like jojoba for much less price. If you don't want to spend herbivore money on blue tansy oil, there's a brand I love. It's called Bloom. It's actually made by two sisters and it's formulated specifically for girls who deal with acne and who have period breakouts. They have period products and they have period breakout products and they actually donate to a charity. It's called um, Days for Girls and it helps young women get education about menstruation. Like, could you imagine growing up and nobody like parents, sisters, nobody told you that one day you're going to be in a ton of pain and like bleed. <laughs> That's what happens to a huge amount of girls across the globe. And these two sisters, specifically one named Taryn said, I want to create a skincare line that helps with period breakouts, but also helps to educate these young girls to know what to expect and to destigmatize this thing that happens naturally to all of us. So it's super awesome that they donate to Days for Girls. I absolutely love their brand. The entire brand Bloom is amazing, but specifically the meltdown oil. <laughs> if you're someone who melts down a lot, like me recently, uh, the meltdown oil will will help out um, and it's 28 bucks instead of like 70 or it might even be up to like 85 now with the herbivore bloom 
blue tansy meltdown oil. If you're an acne prone oh my god, look at this. Like literally, if you are me, that's that's where we go. Growing up, I mean, I had, I feel like it started after I got bangs in middle school, but I started getting really bad, just like, breakouts on my forehead. I would wash my face and use like the tiniest bit of moisturizer, made my skin worse. I really started learning how to take care of my skin correctly, probably while I was filming season one of the summer debris. Wow, uh, the feeling of being afraid to moisturize your skin and having bangs or things that were making your acne worse. Uh, pop quiz time, kids, with your acne big sis. It's time to become a skin intellectual. Welcome to skin school. Yes, skincare nerds, pop quiz. Is hair length correlated to acne? Answer A, yes. Answer B, no. Answer C, get me a fizzy water. Well, answer C, obviously, but other than that, shockingly, answer A is correct. Yes, there was a medical study done in Europe looking at how long someone's hair is compared to how much acne they have. Now, how could that be correlated? What the f you might be saying? Well, that's what the dermatologists who ran the study said too. And what ended up happening is that remember, correlation is not causation. So just because two things are related, it doesn't mean that one caused another. For instance, shark attacks go up when ice cream sales go up. Do ice cream sales cause shark attacks? No. They're correlated, but they don't cause each other. This summer, more people eat ice cream and more shark attacks happen, okay? Okay, now we know. Outside of that, the same thing is at play here. People's hair length did not cause acne, but when people had the longer hair, it was literally going down their back, going down their forehead, spreading oil, spreading conditioner, hair products, etc., And that was actually causing acne, especially around the hairline and on the body. So for a lot of people who struggle with acne, maybe tie up your hair at night or look at using different products in that hairline area. She specifically speaks about the forehead breakouts. Literally, I was such a f emo kid. My email address was like, emo is for lovers. It was terrible. Well, I would wear this black hoodie to school every day and it literally had this awful, awful haircut, like bangs right across my forehead. And um, yeah, I used them to hide my breakouts, not realizing that they were probably making my breakouts worse. Look at this, I got um, student of the month from my science teacher. <laughs> Just look at this, like, it's so terrible. Burn it. Burn it! Burn it. What? Did I say stand there and look stupid? No, I said burn it. But the fear of using a moisturizer and not knowing how to take care of your skin, it's all too real. Some of us like grew up with parents who maybe tried their best, but did not teach us basic life skills, like how to fold our clothes, how to organize a closet or a daily planner, how to brush our teeth, wash our hair, or wash our skin properly. And that is why this channel exists because I struggled with it. And I hope to impart the knowledge that I have learned or think I have learned from doctors, germs, and experts onto others who maybe need that information and are looking for a reliable science-backed way to get it that makes sense and it's hopefully fun to do as well. Blame ADHD, blame answer C, the bubbly soda, blame whatever the f you want. Anyways, I love that she's okay with moisturizing her skin now and it's kind of shocking to hear that she feels she didn't get it under control until she started shooting. Usually celebrities are beautiful first and then they get the roles because of traditional societal standards, but it's awesome to see someone who had talent and was probably cast for that talent or for that reason and then decided, oh, I'm gonna learn about my skin, I'm gonna learn about makeup on set and I'm going to incorporate those things into my routine. Amazing. And then I go in with this herbivore pink cloud moisturizer. She is using this Pink Cloud Moisture Cream from Herbivore. I actually need to try a lot more of Herbivore products. They like got sued for misrepresenting one of their products. And I was like, ah, I'm not gonna touch that with a 10 foot pole. But this moisturizer I've heard things about. Number one, I've heard that it's nice and lightweight, good for oily prone skin. But then I've also heard that it smells like dying, decaying flesh. <laughs> like there are people who are like, it smells like fermenting mushrooms and it is so bad. And that just tells me that maybe there's an issue with the preservative system. Like if it smells fine at first and then just one day it goes rancid, especially with these jars that you're dipping your fingers into. Every time you dip your finger into a jar, you're introducing bacteria, dirt, crap from your hand into that jar. And if that preservative system doesn't literally preserve the product, meaning keeping mold and bacteria away from it, um, it gets nasty real fast. That's why things that are in an airless pump or in a dropper are better, as long as you don't touch the dropper to the skin. Anyways, I digress. The ingredients in this product for 46 doll hairs better be something special, because that's, that's, uh, that, that, 
words in English, expensive, okay? We do have water. Uh, rose flower water is actually the second ingredient, which is surprising to see. A, very expensive. B, very luxurious. Um, and C, we normally see rose as like an extract at the bottom of the ingredients list, meaning it has a small percentage in the product instead of as literally like 30 to 50% of this. Then we have ceteral alcohol, nice and moisturizing caprylic triglyceride, which comes from coconuts. We do have coconut alkalines in here. Glycerin, squalane, shea butter, coconut. I wouldn't recommend this for acne prone skin because of all the coconut in here, but it does have some good moisturizing ingredients. Um, when it does come to the preservative system, this uh, is eh, not the best. We do have tetrasodium glutamate diacetate, and then we have a couple of fragrancing ingredients and citric acid to maybe balance pH. But here's the issue with a lot of products that claim that they're preservative free. Um, think about the word preservative. It means to preserve. Why are we going to remove the things that keep our products fresh? <laughs> That's a recipe for disaster. Like you want to remove the things that stop bacteria and mold and yeast from growing in your product? What the f So a lot of these natural brands, some can be good and some are just danger zone Petri dishes if the preservative system breaks down. And again, based on what I've heard, based on the reviews, people say that like after a month, this product goes rancid. I'd try a sample of it before I buy the whole thing. It looks amazing on her skin and it looks like she's loving using it. So if it works for her, continue, but just keep it in a dry, cool place in a sealed container. Always wash your hands before shoving your fingers in. I always use like the back of my finger or like a spoon. So like your, what is this, a knuckle? It's not a knuckle, your phalanges. What is this called? What is this part? I should know this. Your phalanges, right? Your finger knuckle? <laughs> What do you call it? Use that instead, okay? Life tip. <laughs> Next, I use the Westman Atelier when I get those dry spots and it's hard for makeup to sit on top of it. This just saves the day. Ooh, so she's talking about dry spots. Is she combo and a little bit oily, which is why she's using some oily friendly products, or is she actually dry? Now she's using this uh, skin activator serum. Confusion has entered the chat and my brain yet again, because wouldn't we wanna use the serum before the moisturizer? You see, serums are more liquidy. They're made to penetrate the skin and usually they have a purpose, like getting rid of acne or dryness or wrinkles. And then your moisturizer, it's meant to either add hydration or moisturize, which fun fact are different. Did you know that? Now you know that. Um, like it locks everything in and your moisturizer can have benefits too, but the serum is like the power punch step, right? Um, why would we use um, a, a serum after a moisturizer. Eh, let's check out the ingredients and see if they actually... The woman was too stunned to speak. $150? What the f***? What the f***? It claims that it's a hyperpotent three-in-one serum. You see, I can't even finish a sentence. It might be the caffeine in my brain. It might be chronic exhaustion. It might be struggling mental health. Or <laughs> it might just be the fact that this is $150. They say it's a hyperpotent three-in-one serum that floods skin with 12 actives. That's a lot of actives. To soften fine lines, boost firmness, and deeply hydrate. This better have dolphins with like liquid IVs in it that dive into your skin and literally do backflips in every pour for this price. Uh, let's see what it's actually got in it. Wow. <laughs> wow, this is a waste of money from first impressions. We have water and glycerin, two of the most inexpensive, basic, but good ingredients. Love water, love glycerin, and love penylene glycol. But these are some of the cheapest things you can find in drugstore moisturizers. Really good, but real cheap. Then we've got niacinamide. It's actually at a decent amount. Niacinamide is great for kind of balancing the skin out, specifically with oil production and helping minimize the appearance of pores. We've got beta glucans, which are very moisturizing. We do have ceramides. Those make up 50% of the skin's outer layer. So they are wonderful for rebuilding a skin barrier. But for $150, you can literally get these exact same ingredients in something so much cheaper. I'm trying to think. Um, niacinamide, ceramides, and some adenosine. Pacifica Beauty has some amazing products. Coco Kind, amazing products. Uh, if you want something more hydrating, Biosense and the Squalane. Biosense is still set you back like 60, 70 bucks, but it's way better than 150.
why y'all charging this much for this? Like, I'm trying to look for something in here that's like super special or revolutionary that could justify the price. Maybe there's something about the sourcing or the way they formulate it, but based on first impressions, um, I'm not impressed. And then it also shows that this is made in Korea. Korean beauty is amazing. It's usually really high quality, but it's able to be produced at a less expensive price because the currency that's used in Korea, the Korean won, is not as expensive as the US dollar. So even for a high quality product that doesn't involve slave labor and doesn't exploit anyone, you can still get that same product manufactured and made at a great price when you are selling it in the US or under the Euro or the American dollar or even the Canadian dollar. So why are we charging 158 for something that was made in Korea? You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Well, uh, I am so glad that Westman Ulterior has the ulterior motive to make a bunch of money off of some very talented celebrities and people who don't know better. But from my perspective, I would go with some of these alternatives that we spoke about before spending 120 bucks on this. You could literally buy all three of these for the price of one of those. It's just the math. The math is, is mathing, okay? Quick maths. Two plus two is four. Minus one, that's three. Quick maths. And save your skin. Two plus two is four. Minus one, that's three. Quick maths. And I have tried to curate a skincare routine and makeup routine that's entirely cruelty-free. I feel like there are a lot of brands now that have moved in that direction. And it's, it's always been something that's but important to me. So next I use this oh cocoa pine sunscreen. Wow, okay, she's hitting us with the gold, literally the gold cocoa kind package, as well as the cruelty-free. Fun fact, for those who don't know or are new here, uh, welcome to the family, you, you know where the button is if you want more science, skincare, edutainment. But all of the products that I use are vegan and cruelty-free. That matters so much to me, and I love that she cares about it too. I also love that she's trying to build herself a skincare routine that works for her. Again, I'm really gawking at a lot of these products that are way too expensive. And I want everyone, including you, to know that you don't have to spend a ridiculous amount of money to get good skin. But if this is what works for her and if she likes it, and if it's literally working on her dry patches, go for it. Now, if she coming to me and if she asking for some suggestions, I would love to build her a skincare routine that is cruelty free. I'd love to build her one for like when she's on set and then when her offset routine is. Like, oh my gosh, that'd be so fun. And I love that she's giving it her best and caring about her skin. Because remember, it's not just a routine. Routine, it's a ritual. This is literally hygiene, and it's something that should make you feel good about what you're putting on your face, the result that you're getting, and in my opinion, the price you're paying to do that. I love that she's cruelty free, and I think that it is something that can be really hard. You know, no one wants to give up their favorite product or their favorite food or something, right? But if you are passionate about either animal cruelty or the environment or whatever it is that matters to you, sometimes doing something for someone other than yourself ends up having benefits that you never could have imagined. For example, when I went cruelty-free and vegan, I did it for the animals and the planet. I did not expect it to do anything to my skin. And lo and behold, that was a literal, a good third of the chunk of me clearing my chronic cystic acne. Like I lived with this on my face for years. I was bullied, I was ridiculed, I picked at my skin, it bled, it hurt to lay down on the sheets at night, it was terrible. I literally stopped consuming animal products because I didn't wanna hurt the animals and I was like, if the slaughterhouse stuff is not good enough for my eyes, why is it good enough for my stomach? And then when I stopped, I didn't expect my tummy troubles to go away. I didn't expect my skin to start looking better. Like, holy f Like, look, I still get pimples and sometimes they still bother me and my mental health is still questionable these days. But, holy f Like, my skin has improved so much and we've done a video on what goes into that. But literally a third has been dietary. The other third has been stress and like mental health. And the last third has been skincare and understanding what works for me with ingredients that are medically proven at the right price. Literally search Cassandra Bankson, acne or Cassandra Banks and niacinamide or Cassandra Banks and cruelty free. We've done videos on this channel for the last, <laughs> for the last 13 years. Can you believe this channel has existed for 13 years? Help! Oh my God. If you and I had a baby with you too, it'd be like a teenager now. That is so scary. Anyways, you can search that and you can find a lot of these things, but this channel literally exists because of that struggle and for that reason to help others with their skin. And I love to see that whether or not this channel has ever crossed her feed, that she cares about her skin and the animals and she's trying her best to learn about what works for her and do something that's right for her skin, for the planet and for her life. Yes, girl, and the cocoa kind 
Coca-Crime sunscreen. <laughs> Didn't we just speak about the Coca-Crime serum? This sunscreen is so good. This is a mineral one. They have a purple silk one. I actually like that one better, but both of these are available at Ulta, at Target. They're vegan, they're cruelty-free. They work well and they feel so good on skin. My mom was really, really adamant about me and my sister wearing it when we were younger um, and reapplying throughout the day. I was always the kid who was like, did everybody apply their sunscreen? But I just do like a, I don't say that much. A celebrity who not only uses sunscreen, but uses the proper amount. Oh, I am a fangirl. I need to watch the summer I turned pretty or 30 or whatever is happening in this. Oh my gosh, that right there, I am subscribed. I am, I, yes, that. Wow, I have, what do you call it? A stan. I'm, <laughs> I'm a stan of this sunscreen application. This Coco Kind sunscreen is so good, by the way. It's an SPF 32, it's only 25 bucks. It has a micro algae extract, it has rice in it. It's very hydrated. I would say it's better for combo to dry skin, but it is a mineral formula. And listen, her mom got her and her sister to use sunscreen. Love you, mom. Love you. I love my mom too. My mom, yes, used to put me in sunscreen. She used to put me in a Barney suit. I literally looked like Barney on the beach and I was teased for it, but at least I was sun protected in my UPF swimsuit, okay? I literally was teased for so many reasons. Like if you saw this on the beach, you'd be like, what the fuck is this Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Barney worshiper doing here? Well, I did the sun sunscreen thing too, but it sounds like her mom did um, a socially acceptable job, whereas my mom did her best <laughs> and I looked like this and I got really bullied for it. Oopsies. The next I'm gonna just use this Ilia lip balm. It has this like cooling effect. Ooh, so Illa is a very interesting brand. It's another one of these brands that call themselves natural, which um, again, there is no standard definition for that. So what does it mean? I mean, lead is natural, arsenic is natural. Give me something to work with here. However, Illa's products are preserved appropriately and they have some <laughs> gorgeous pigments. I am obsessed with a lot of their lip products, their lipsticks specifically, and I've been looking more into kind of some of their face products. If there's anything from Illa that I need to buy, please put it in the comments so I can spend my money on it so you don't have to. But I genuinely think that they're a very underrated brand and a lot of people don't speak about them because they're kind of bulked into like the clean beauty, woo woo, friffy, almond mom, um, soccer drive in your Lululemons and your flip-flops stuff, which again, no harm to the Almond Moms and Gwyneth Paltrow, like wasp moms, you know, get your, get your honey, get your, get your kids to soccer on time go for it. But at the same time, I feel like Illa does have a place of its own outside of that, but a lot of people just group it into there and they don't see some of the amazing products that are a part of their lineup. This is the wrap relieving balm and it has some very interesting ingredients. It's unfortunately $24, which is not the worst. Like I've seen lip glosses for like 50, but it's not cheap. Okay. This has sea succulent and prickly pear, both of which have vitamin C and antioxidants. This is actually really good on the lips and it has shea butter. So it's actually moisturizing. Now it does have some fragrancing things. So if you're super sensitive, don't waste your money on this. Like there are better things out there. We've actually done a video on the best lip glosses for like sensitive skin. Um, and you're not crazy. If you feel like your lips get addicted to lip balms, they're not actually getting addicted. Your lips are just getting irritated and chapped. And so you're in the cycle of reapplying the Illa one. I don't believe based on the ingredients should do that. Their lipstick never did that to me. Um, whereas other products from other brands have, but to each his own, I think Illa is really underrated. I need to try some more of their things, but I love that she's using this. I love that it's vegan and cruelty free. It's got like a minty sort of minty scent. I love to hydrate my lips before I, I do a bold lip because I feel like it makes the application yes. a lot easier. Yes. So then I, I use this herbivore rose hibiscus spray just for the vibes. For the vibes. You know, sometimes you just gotta do things for the vibes. This is a rose hibiscus spray from Herbivore. Very expensive. What is the spray that Coco Kind has? They just launched like a raspberry hibiscus spray. That one's good. If you have acne, there's an Everglow spray that is amazing. But if you really want beautiful bright skin on a budget, K-Beauty, babes. K-Beauty. There is a product that I got off of Stylevana. It's from a brand called TM. It's in like um, a yellowish package. It is literally like a niacinamide spray for your face and body. So good. You get a giant amount and it's very inexpensive. The Herbivore Hydrating Mist comes in at $36 and it's interesting to see that she's using a lot of products from the same brand. Um, it sounds like maybe she really likes this brand, which is awesome. Keep using it if it works. For your face, 
and your budgets. But the ingredients on this, um, they're kind of basic. It's basically water. We have some rose flour. We do have some radish root ferment filtrate. A lot of people look at that and they're like, why radishes? Radish root ferment filtrate is actually a natural preservative. Natural, whatever that means, right? Same with the Japanese honeysuckle. A lot of brands have started using those as preservatives because when people read them, they don't look as scary, but that's actually something that's preserving the product so it doesn't go rancid, fun fact. We also have some hydration favorites such as glycerin and sodium hyaluronate, which remember is related to that hyaluronic acid that everybody loves. Well, most people love, some people hate it, but we've got a video on that too. Literally just search Cassandra Banks then, hyaluronic acid, and you can watch the whole spiel about it. We have some coconut fruit powder, um, some hibiscus flower extract. All of these have vitamin C. All of these are antioxidants. They're in a small amount because they're diluted in this water, but they're good. The thing in here is that it says, I don't even know how to pronounce this. It's a Latin name. We have some Cocosina Indica fruit extract. Am I saying that right? When I first read this, a Spanish brain came on and it said Cocina, but this is Cocochina, Coquinichina. I read it as Coco, <laughs> like cocaine, and then Cocina, which means kitchen in Spanish. Indica? Isn't indica like marijuana? Can someone who smokes the weed help me? Is this a Cocochina indica fruit extract? I don't know what the f that is. Google says it's an ivy gourd fruit extract. Um, I don't know, I am not familiar with this. Go ask an herbivist, an herbivist, go ask a naturopath, not me. All I know is that for $36, it looks decent. And if you're doing it just for the vibes, do it. Uh, but I'm gonna stick with the K-Beauty and with the Cocoa Pint. So I love these lip tinted eye masks. We got sent a bunch of them on set and we use them all the time. And I love them so much that I bought them for my mom. One thing that became a little difficult when filming was self-care <laughs> for sure. You know, you're working long hours and when you're not on set, I guess you're sleeping. Or I mean, not necessarily, like we were hanging out all the time, which was amazing and wonderful. But I think that's the thing that I had to realize was like, oh, I have to, get sleep and, and take care of myself in order to have energy to give 100% um, on set. Oh, she is speaking to me right now. Um, I literally have this ring that tracks when I sleep and when I'm awake and all those things. And uh, <laughs> I, I think I've told you, I've really been going through it. This has been one of like the hardest years for me for many reasons. But um, when I read my little sleep thing, it's like, you were in bed for 10 hours. You slept one hour and 30 minutes because I was crying the entire time. Like it's so bad. And I wake up with a puffy face and my eyes are puffy and um, it f***ed with you. Oh, it f***ed with you. And it makes you break out. She is so right. Sleep is so important to a beauty routine and self-care needs to be prioritized. Again, it does not come naturally to a lot of people. You need to make it a priority. And the fact that she has had to do that and was able to find products that work with her busy schedule on set, Mwah, I love this and I love that this is a celebrity example of this. Now, what she's using are the Live Tinted Under My Patches. I actually haven't tried these. I want to so bad. They're made by Deepika. She actually created the line Live Tinted. She started off as a YouTuber who's an amazing makeup artist. And she was like, I'm sick of not seeing girls who look like me with beautiful brown skin in media. So let's change that. Let's Live Tinted. And boy, does she. I love this. Now, I've wanted to get my hands on these. I've tried the sunscreen. These eye patches in general are great because eye patches literally stick to the under eye area. Very different than eye creams. The eye patch actually adds what's called mechanical or physical pressure and it literally pushes those little bags up and back into the face. Kind of like a push-up bra for your under eyes, but it's like a compression bra for your under eyes. Pushes the bags away. And then a bonus is that if you have a good under eye patch, it actually has skincare ingredients that infuse themselves into the skin. They can brighten, they can help with wrinkles, they can help with hydration, whatever you might need. This one specifically is 22 doll hairs and I actually might need to buy this because it has some great ingredients. Again, some are basic like water and glycerin, but for the price, that's fine. Then we've got niacinamide. We have Bakuchia, which is known as like a retinol alternative. It's really good for wrinkles. We do have cucumber and banana fruit extract, but here's what I love to see. Peptides, peptides, peptides. You get a peptide, you get a peptide, you get a peptide. See, Oprah gives out cars. 
I say you get peptides. These are fantastic. We have tripeptide 1, palmityl pentapeptide 4, dipeptide 2, copper tripeptide 1. These are fantastic for everything from anti-inflammation to wound healing, to darkness, to anti-puffing, to literally anti-wrinkle effects. We have caffeine, aloe leaf extract, ascorbic acid, which is also known as vitamin C for brightening. Deepika did such an amazing job with these products. I'm actually gonna add this to my cart. Again, I've been crying, and so I've had to test out way more eye patches than I ever thought I would. See, a silver lining to be a mentally unstable is being able to really put eye patches to the test. And I'll tell you, some have failed miserably and others are doing a good job. But um, I might have to try this one for my next 10 hours in bed, one hour of sleep escapade. <laughs> And I'm just gonna line my eyes while I'm letting these guys sit for a little bit. She does a little bit of makeup, which we love to see, and I love that she's actually letting the eye patches sit and soak into her skin while she's doing her makeup. I fing love this. I'm just gonna go in with this Coco Kind Revitalizing Eye Cream. And it has this lovely, like, applicator that's also very cooling. Okay, I love that it's cooling and I love that it's Coco Kind, but again, eye creams are overpriced moisturizers. Coco Kind was made by a woman named Priscilla. She used to work at JP Morgan and she decided, I'm actually gonna risk it all and try to create a skincare brand that gives people what I wish that I had, especially at the time because there weren't any eco-friendly brands that claimed they were natural. Well, she did it and she did a good job. Now here's the thing. Coco Kind is an amazing brand. They have some awesome products, but they still have some that I don't like. And this is one of them. Um, it's not a bad eye cream per se. The applicator is actually phenomenal. It's just not one of the best. And again, most eye creams are just literal facial moisturizers in a tinier tube that they can charge you more for. Because if you're gonna charge me $20 for this and $20 for a moisturizer, this is much smaller than this. Literally search Cassandra Banks and eye cream and you will see why I hate eye cream so much. Now, there is something to be said if you need a different product here versus the face because of makeup application or because of the texture or a sensitivity, you can go for it. Um, but this one, I'm not a fan of. The best part about this product is, um, is the applicator. Uh, if you wanna use it for the applicator, go for it. Uh, you know, if you cry all day, <laughs> like me, um, these types of applicators can be nice. I've been using one from Wishful Skin. That has been one of the best. Uh, you know, really, <laughs> literally, it's like a cold spoon for your eyes. But overall, I'd say, um, if you're not a crying emotional <laughs> uh, skip this. Just use your facial moisturizer right up here and uh, save yourself the money. She then speaks to us a little bit about growing up in New York City. She does her beautiful berry lip and the rest of her routine. And I love her makeup application. I would highly recommend actually watching the Vogue video um, so you can see what else she does. But for me, I think I'm gonna watch the summer I turned Pretty. I keep on thinking it's the summer I turned 30. <laughs> Whoops. I actually still have to watch Ariel the Little Mermaid and the Barbie thing. I have a lot of things that I want to watch and I just cry all day instead. So maybe I should go to a movie theater. Maybe I should touch grass. This is a long video, so maybe I should end the video. But now you know quite a bit more about how to read these ingredient labels, what she's using, and why it may or may not work for her skin. And I love that she cares about self-care and about being cruelty-free. I wish I could give her a hug. I would love to build her a routine. I would love to give her a facial if she wants like a chemical peel or an LED facial or something with some microcurrents. Get on over here. I want to know more about her and I I'm going to find her on the interwebs or the Instagram and see what else she continues to put on her face. I want you to remember that self-care is an active act. It's not just something that comes passively. And part of that is your mental health, saying nice things to yourself, working through the difficult things when you have those times and giving yourself the same compassion that you give to so many others. Because sometimes we don't do that. And I need you to hear that you are enough. And even if it feels like the world is falling apart around you, maybe you're not running in circles. Maybe you're on a spiral staircase going up and you're just seeing yourself going around in circles and you don't realize that you're going somewhere, babes, okay? I love you, you're doing amazing. And I know sometimes it can be rough and you can't speak the English or have the words. Um, but I keep on telling myself that I'm gonna get through it. And I think that you are too. So remember to stay hydrated, both orally and topically and under the eyes where that might be a little too puffy. Reapply that sunscreen. The Coco Kind one she's using is phenomenal. And always remember to be beautiful both inside and out. I love you and I cannot wait to see you in this next video. Hopefully I'll have had more sleep when I filmed this video. Or hopefully this video is before my f***ing life went to shit and um, I'm not an emotional wreck in it. Huh? Well, you have to click it to find out. Okay, love you guys. Bye.